Good afternoon. Welcome to Regent University and welcome to the Regent University Library. My name is Sarah Barron. I'm the Dean of the Library here and I am thrilled that you have joined us to dedicate the John C. Wimber Papers to the Regent University Library Special Collections and Archives in honor of the Wimber family. I'd like to introduce Dr. Graham Twelftree. Dr. Twelftree is the Distinguished Professor of the New Testament in the School of Divinity. He is an avid library user, many times here in the library when I'm coming in to work. I greet him as I come in. And, um, and we love all of his comments and suggestions for the library collection and services. He's one of our, our best users. Dr. Twelftree was instrumental in communication with the Wimber family as they considered donating their papers to this library and to our special collections and archives. So Dr. Twelftree. Thank you, Dean Barron. Uh, let me tell you a story. I hope my accent works for you. On Sunday, August the 14th, uh, 1994, Brian Anderson from uh, North Phoenix Vineyard was visiting us. He was preaching in our main line church in South Australia, uh, South Australia as he had been over the previous few evenings. When Brian finished speaking, he rather matter-of-factly asked the Holy Spirit to come. Within a few minutes, the Spirit had fallen on us. Folk wept or laughed as inner pain was released. There were conversions, marriages were healed, demons were driven out, a drug addict was freed. Little children as well as adults were swept off their feet and lay motionless on the floor. Indeed, hardly any of the 925 of us in church that day missed the dramatic and personal experience of the powerful presence of God. My life and my theology were changed. My church was also changed. We left pastoring that traditional church and planted a vineyard church. What got our attention was this. Brian and his team were embodying for us John Wimber's value of holding together an openness to the spirit along with a high regard for scripture which was academically informed. So I'm not surprised that without really trying, the movement John catalyzed has spread across the world. From Australia to Zimbabwe, there are 1,600 churches associated directly with the vineyard movement. And many, many more have taken up vineyard distinctives such as being naturally supernatural or emphasizing the importance of everyone getting to play or that the kingdom or powerful presence of God is not only seen in Jesus' ministry, but can also be seen in ours. Then there's John's theology and practice of worship, which has found its way into almost every Christian tradition in every part of the globe. John Wimber is unquestionably one of the most significant global figures of the 20th century renewal of the church. So it's entirely appropriate that this man, his thinking and the movement he led be carefully studied. When I initially telephoned Cara Wimber to ask if she would consider lodging John's papers here, she immediately replied, well, I guess they're better there than in our shed. <laughs> so as a member of the School of Divinity, I want to thank Carol and Christy and the family for making John's papers available to generations of students. Through the work of these students, John can be better understood and his legacy continued. I'd like to introduce one of those students to you, Connie Dawson. Connie's ordained with the Assemblies of God and is the founder of Banner of Love Ministries. Connie and her husband, Bruce, have served five years on mainland China and another five in the Philippines. She's worked with pastors and taught in Bible colleges and at leadership conferences. She has an MA in theology and an MDiv as well. Importantly for us, she's planning to write an intellectual biography of John Wimber for her Regent PhD dissertation. Connie. Thank you, Dr. Twelve Tree. 
Wimber family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I count it a great privilege to say a word of thanks to the Wimber family on behalf of the students at Regent University for their generous contribution of the Wimber collection. As Dr. Twelftree shared with you, I plan to write my dissertation on John Wimber. Those of you who have written a dissertation know the pain, the agony, and the soul searching that goes into selecting a dissertation topic. Because you know you'll spend two years interacting with that material, you know you'd better love your subject. After a great deal of prayer, I believe I came to the understanding that it was God's will for me to study the life of John Wimber. This was before I learned that the family had donated his collection to the Regent Library. So you can imagine how excited I was when I heard the news. Over the past few months, I've had an opportunity to go through every item in the 27 boxes of the Wimber collection. It's difficult to describe how moved I was when I went through the material in these boxes. There were folders that contained his writings. Some were handwritten, some were typed with notes in the columns. There were brochures of his travels. There were folders with collections of his own research, of his own personal interests. There were letters of correspondence, and most of all, volumes of his own personal teachings. Recently, I read a story by Don Williams. He's a vineyard pastor and a close friend of Wim Wimber's. He talked about the first time he met John. He said he was a minister in crisis and he had gone to John for counsel. After listening to Williams for about two hours, he said that John took him down the hall to a storage closet, opened the door, and loaded his arms full of teaching tapes, books, and music. He said he prayed for Don, and then he said, Don, I want to give you everything that God has given to me. I think I understand a little bit of what Don felt that day. Whenever Do Dr. Bob Sivany walked me down the hall to the Wimber collection and opened the door and I looked at the boxes, it was almost like I could feel John Wimber beside me saying, Connie, I want to give you everything that God has given me. But you know, Don Williams and I are not the only people that have felt this way. This was the way that John Wimber lived his life and his ministry. Through his emphasis on the Gospels, John brought people face to face with the words, the signs, and the wonders of Jesus. He united knowledge with experience and taught that it's not about superstars, but the gifts of the Spirit are situational, they're incarnational, and everyone can do the stuff. That was his desire to give to the body of Christ all that God had given to him. Wimber said that he was just a fat man on his way to heaven, or that he was changing God's pocket. But in the estimation of others, Wimber was a whole lot more. See, Peter Wagner called him a molder of an entire generation and christened him the fountainhead of the third wave renewal movement of the 20th century. Carol Wimber believed that God had a blueprint for renewal and Wimber played a key role. John Wimber embodied renewal, and everywhere he went, he left people saved, delivered, trained, and equipped to do the works of Jesus. If Wimber indeed was a key player in renewal, how fitting it is that the Wimber collection find its home in Regent University, which has the only doctoral program in the world for renewal studies. <laughs> As a student of Renewal Studies, I want to say a personal and heartfelt thank you to the Wimber family for this collection. But I'm not alone in my thanks to them. I represent a multitude of students on this campus, those of future generations, and people around the world who, because of the technology of the internet, will have access to the rich treasures preserved in the Wimber collection. Because of your generous contribution, you have made it possible for John Wimber to continue to share with the world everything that God gave to him. That was his heart. And if he was here today, that's what he would still want to do. So thank you, and God bless you.
Well, we're thrilled to welcome several, several members of the Wimber family to this event. Sharon and Tim Wimber are with us. Would you please stand? Um, they've been married for 28 years, and they have four children, Christian, Nathaniel, Genevieve, and Katie Joy, and their kids are their biggest ministry, besides their jobs, running a pool service, and management at Trader Joe's. Thank you so much for being with us. Sharon and Tim have recently been involved with Christian-based 12-step groups using Rick Warren Celebrate Recovery materials, and they feel it's truly a blessing being with the newly saved and the not saved yet. Christy and Sean Wimber have been serving the Vineyard community for 19 years. Would you please stand? And um, currently, they are pastoring the vineyard in Yerba Linda, California. For the last 11 years, they have been making John's teachings and materials available to the world through vineyard music. Christy has also been working on several projects containing John Wimber materials from the last 30 years and released many of the products, including the book, The Way In is the Way On, and a new release in November this year, Everyone Gets to Play. They have two children, Cami Rose and John Richard, and they are joined today by their friends David Roos and thank you so much for the music David it was amazing the worship music was great thank you and their family friends Tracy and Mark Molinar are with them as well so please join me in welcoming Christy I can do it I can do it well hello this is wonderful this is wonderful we um we have to, I have to say, I, um, this is such a privilege for us. And um, on behalf of the Vineyard Movement and the Wimber family, um, we have to say thank you to you guys and, and to the whole Regent University for just the privilege of getting to do this. I, I honestly, um, after John's passing, was uh, it became really clear to Sean and I, even more so than before, that uh, that if a heritage and a legacy is not talked about and made available, it's easily lost. And uh, so we've made it our mission, in a sense, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, because otherwise it'd be a drag. And uh, <laughs> uh, that we. Um, have a privilege of having the legacy of not only our family, but for what uh, uh, God used John in for not only the vineyard, but the church uh, worldwide. And the truth is when we, uh, when I just began working on this project two or three years ago, um, you know, I really began praying about the places that God wanted to use so that the legacy and the heritage could continue. And we began to pray about that. And then um, Carol, who has, she does so, honestly and so openly uh, uh, thought that this was one of those places that and uh, so it's it's a privilege but I have to tell you today I've been a bit shaken because I was telling Sean we were talking about um, you guys have a wonderful heritage yourself and a legacy of yourself and I thought I thought how powerful it is when the body of Christ comes together in such a way uh, that I've seen today and just the heritage and the legacy that is here and the, the privilege that, that we have to join that is an honor for us. And uh, we feel very blessed to be a, a part of that. Um, we know that, uh, you know, John uh, would, would love this for many reasons. And, and he loved uh, people being equipped. He loved people being equipped. But he also had great admiration for people that wanted to continue to learn. One of my favorite things about John was that he was a learner up till the very end. And you can't say that about many leaders, I think, today even, that, uh, that they're continuing to be leaders all the way. I want to be a lifelong learner. And John was one of those people. He just always wanted to learn. He always had great admiration for people that, that were brilliant and that he would say were smarter than he was. But the other side that was really important to John and that I've actually seen even take place today that I've really loved is the Holy Spirit that's interacting with what's happening here and which is such a big part of who we are, of, of having the knowledge, which is very, very important, but also having the Holy Spirit and together, uh, working together to bring the kingdom of God to the people that need it so desperately. Amen. And so we feel very privileged. And I, I have to tell you that this is a blessing for us. 
and that uh, I, I uh, remember John, uh, we were in England at some trips at some point in our life, and uh, him seeing the Wesley Museum, and it really moved him, and today I've been thinking about that and just how much he loved that, and I just thought, what, what a privilege it is that, that even for our children, our, our children's children, that there'll be a place where that they can come study and that people can be equipped and that we can work together to reach this, this world for Christ. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming today. It's my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker today, Gordon Robertson. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Christian Broadcasting Network. For several years prior to that, he was on the Board of Trustees and was the executive producer of the 700 Club. He and his wife, Catherine, and their three children live in Virginia Beach. And these are all true facts. Wouldn't mislead you. But they don't. <laughs> Most of these were true facts, <laughs> but that was a lead-in to what's really important. The, the true statements that you can say about someone don't necessarily capture the heart or the ministry of a person or the leadership ability, and I think it's altogether fitting that Gordon is the keynote speaker for this event today, so welcome, Gordon. You got my wife's name right, so that's really good. I need to get this up so you guys can hear me. I am grateful that uh, John Wimber actually wrote, so we're not inducting the um, John Wimber hard drives. Um, I was meditating on that. I can't get this thing to move. Anyway, I won't bother. I'll lean down. Um, and, you know, it is strange to think, you know, in 10, 15 years, what are, how are we going to have records going forward and, and how do you maintain uh, the personal correspondence of people but uh, it's wonderful and Christy and Sean thank you for this tremendous gift um, at the risk of gilding the lily as to what people have already said you know for, for me um, and in my mission career when I was in Manila that's when I first became aware of John Wimber and and I did it in an unusual way I was at the Asian Theological Seminary, and to give you the background, that was started by American Baptists and then was sort of turned over to a group in the Philippines in Manila, and they were very staunchly evangelical and wanted nothing to do with the charismatic or Pentecostal community and, and actually had prohibitions about speaking in tongues. And I was there meeting with some of their professors to talk about uh, a professorship in missiology to try to advance the mission uh, of, of Filipinos going out into the mission field, because that was what I felt God's call was on me. And they, they knew me, they knew my father, and they had seen the 700 Club, and they weren't all that enthusiastic um, uh, about, you know, sort of embracing the vision I was trying to bring to them. And I found John Wimber to be the bridge that when I started talking, and the key word was power evangelism. When I started talking about that, they clicked into it right away, because here was a professor at Fuller who had fully embraced that the Holy Spirit was still active today and still getting people healed and still getting them delivered. In the same group that wanted nothing to do with the Charismatics was fine, instantly fine, with talking about healing about words of knowledge, and even about casting out demons. And that got me on a quest to find out more about John Wimber because that was, uh, if he could have done that, I, I considered that nothing short of a miracle, uh, that he could actually find a bridge between charismatic Pentecostals and evangelicals and have them all come to together at the same table to try to evangelize the world again. And he gave the intellectual underpinnings for that. He also gave the intellectual underpinnings for the best method of evangelism is church planting. Now, I know others contributed, McGavern, Jim Montgomery, uh, you know, he's, he's not alone in that. But 
that idea has really taken hold. And that is an ongoing, enduring legacy. As we've already heard from Zimbabwe to Australia, the number of vineyard churches that were established. But I think more importantly than just the sheer number of vineyard churches, the influence that idea has on the body of Christ at large. For me, um, my first vineyard church I ever walked into, of all places, was Perth, Australia. Uh, and I had been invited to speak at a governor's prayer breakfast. And here was a group that had managed to get into the highest echelons of um, political and judicial authority. And they, um, it was amazing to me how simple their belief was and how unflashy they were with what they were trying to do to transform Western Australia. And they had taken John's concepts and ideas and applied it to a much larger community than just the four walls of their church. And they were actively trying to see the kingdom of God penetrate into the highest levels of government in Western Australia. Um, and that, that is something that, I mean, you can't measure that kind of legacy. That transformational legacy, the power of ideas, that ideas that you, as an average human being, can get hooked up with God and do the stuff. And not just do the stuff on Sunday morning, but do the stuff all, all through the week and in the grocery store and in the courtroom and in politics and in your business and in all your relationship, you can do the stuff. But it doesn't end there. Um, let me flash forward you to, of all places, London, England, where my dear brother Tim and his lovely wife Lisa and I were, and I felt they tricked me into going to, of all places, an Anglican Communion Church, Holy Trinity Brompton. Now, at the time I was living in Manila, I was going to a charismatic cell-based church, and we thought we had God. <laughs> and there was no way an Anglican church was going to have God. <laughs> this was my preconception. I've since repented. It's OK. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lisa was all excited about the Alpha course. And uh, she had sent me the Alpha tapes. I had actually used that in a missionary training program in Manila. And I would gotten excited about it. Although I thought there were some translation problems that, you know, the, the, the whole il illustration from Nicky Gumby about we need our aerials open to God. And it just didn't work in Asia. I had, a, I had no idea what an aerial was. But I, I wanted to meet the Nicky Gumbel. And so Nicky Gumbel is preaching at Holy Trinity Brompton. And so we pull up into this church, and it looks very Anglican. I mean, it's about 400 years old, and it's got all the cut stone you could ever want. I think it had even had gargoyles outside. <laughs> I mean, it had the look. And I'm expecting to walk in and see vestments and, the, you know, I wasn't expecting incense, but it, I was expecting high church. What I got was a bunch of people in blue jeans. I was overdressed. <laughs> and they were singing vineyard praise and worship. You may not know this. There's a, there's a terrible rumor going around that John used to be a keyboard player with the Righteous Brothers. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's going around. It's true. Um, you know, the legacy of music is a whole nother area where he opened up praise and worship and got us out of the hymnal and into an experience with God in our worship. But that's another story. I sit down, and instead of Nicky Gumbel, we get Sandy Miller. And I find out Sandy Miller is, used to be a lawyer, which, uh, all right, Sandy, go. You used to be a lawyer. I used to be a lawyer. Um, and all he wanted to talk about that Sunday morning in London was the influence of John Wimber on his life and how he had been transformed and changed as a young student at Cambridge. He had visions of uh, becoming a barrister and making a lot of money uh, and God caught him on that way. But his idea of church was an old idea of Anglican 
And when John Wimber came to England, and he heard John Wimber in that very soft, casual way, have a word of knowledge for a woman sitting in that prayer meeting that he personally knew. And he said, how in the world did he know what was wrong? And then not only that, know that she had been healed. He said that completely changed him. So when you analyze the legacy, the witness that John Wimber gave to the Christian community and to the world, you've got to look far beyond just the papers, far beyond just the music, far beyond what's just written on pages. You have to look at the letters written on the hearts of people around the world. Those are the epistles. Those are the letters that will be stored. We're going to store some papers here in a very temporary place, and I hope it all goes away when God comes back. But that legacy will not go away. And that will last for all eternity. And from that experience, Sandy Miller got the idea that, well, we can have that same thing too. And from that, you see so many different things that John has spawned out just from his gentle, consistent witness. So Christy, Sean, thank you. Thank you. We will treasure these because it is a treasure. And I hope many students here at Regent are inspired, inspired that they too can do the stuff. And they too can teach others to do the stuff. We've got a plaque for you. Get that. Let's just, let's just take a, a moment and pray and ask God's blessing on this. Lord, we just come to you right now and Lord, we're just humbled. We're humbled by what you were able to do with a man who, who was himself willing to be humble to be used by you. And so, Lord, we just ask that we would be constantly reminded what each one of us can do when we do it with you. So, Lord, we just ask for your blessing over this collection. We ask that you draw people to it, that they may discover the same truths that you revealed to John, that may, they may take and be inspired to take the same walk with you. Do it, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before we close, I would like to recognize just a few more people. And um, they don't know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to ask Robert Sivany and Donald Gantz to please stand. Bob and Don um, work in special collections, and they have been processing and going through many boxes, the 27 boxes. And so they are familiar with these materials, and I want to thank them for all the work they've done on the collection. I would also like to recognize any of our current or former trustees who might be here. I know we have a couple of, of trustees. Former current, they don't want to stand. <laughs> oh, there's one coming in. There we go, good, thank you for coming. <laughs> Bobby's coming in. And also before we close, I'd like to especially thank all of our guests from the Wimber community, I mean from the Vineyard community. <laughs> Sorry, the Vineyard community who came to be with us tonight and also our experienced Regent weekend guests as well. So if we can close with just one more prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this gathering. Thank you for the Wimber family and thank you for the blessing of John Wimber on this world. Thank you for selecting this university and this library to be part of his legacy. Please help us to carry Christ's message in everything we do. In your name we ask, amen. Please have a wonderful evening. <laughs>